Advertising is a joke. It's dead. The end. Lol. Just kidding. Hi. My name's Kate O'Connor. And believe it or not, I am a comedy writer, performer and improviser. I love jokes and I'm not a particularly serious-minded person, so I see the absurd in everything. Luckily, I found myself in a career where I'm paid to be the person in the room willing to say the ridiculous thing. See, I'm also a conceptual creative and copywriter. Today, I want to talk to you about why I think we should all think about advertising as though it is a joke, and why leaning into jokes and humour can make all of us more creative. As a freshman debater, I was taught to always sign posts, so here you go. First, we're going to take a little trip down Insight Lane on a joke structure donkey. Then we're going to take the second right down Please Can You Make This Copy Punchier Boulevard. And finally, we'll take a brief detour into the humorous subjective region of Excuseville. So buckle up, and if there's any turbulence, just don't at me, okay? Understanding insights through joke structure. When it comes to thinking about campaign ideas and adverts, jokes are a useful tool. The way that jokes are written, told, and organically created, think having banter with your mates down the pub, and we can go down the pub, provides us with a framework for thinking about ideas based on human truths, or to put it in gonky creative strategist speak, insights. To be clear, I'm not saying that in order to appeal to people, ads necessarily have to be funny, though I do think it helps, and I'll have a little rant about that in a minute. What I'm saying is, ads have to tickle the same part of the brain that jokes do when the audience goes, oh, I'd never thought about it like that. You know, the oh yeah moment. That moment doesn't have to be funny, it just has to speak to people about themselves in a way that they recognise, but from an angle they might never have seen it from before. It's a bit like how we only ever see our own face mirrored back at us. So when we see it the right way round using a camera, it looks a bit weird, but you're not quite sure why. It's when we realise that's what we actually look like in real life. That's the oh yeah moment. This is an observational comics bread and butter. Think about any observational stand-up you've ever seen. Michael McIntyre, Sarah Millican, Darrow Bree and Victoria Wood, Peter Kay, the list is endless. They have crowds rolling in the aisles with simple things like, isn't it funny the way we walk when we try on new shoes? It's not rocket science and theoretically it shouldn't even be funny, but it tickles that, oh yeah, part of the brain. We do all do a weird new shoe dance when we try them on for the first time to figure out if they fit right. But comedians aren't wizards, they just show us the world the way it really is. They find universal truths and hold them up for us to go, oh yeah. And that's what we, as advertising creatives, should aim to do. Let's talk about copy. Making copy punchier with punchlines. Joke structure is also a really useful tool when it comes to writing copy. Again, I'm not saying all copy has to be funny, that would be mad. Tone of voice is king, after all. Mind you, I am struggling to think of a single brand that wouldn't benefit from a light dusting of well-placed well humour, even really serious brands, but the key is to keep it tasteful and appropriate. Dawn French's rule of thumb is one that every creative should, should write out in loopy faux calligraphy and blue tack to the wall above their computer. If it's funny, it's not in bad taste, and if it's in bad taste, it's not funny. Anyway, we've gotten sidetracked. Joke structure and copy. Whenever I am asked to take a piece of writing and make it punchier, first, I throw my hands up at the sky and howl at the moon in frustration at the lack of an actual brief. Then I make a cup of coffee, read the thing, and try to spot opportunities to incorporate punchlines. I don't mean in the old school of, said the actress to the bishop, or whatnot. Like, rather, is there anywhere where there is space to play? Putting funny to one side for a second, think about the types of things that punchlines can be. Use those things as tools. 
Maybe there is space for an odd but elevated adjective or a metaphor that does the job perfectly but it's totally unexpected. Maybe there's an afterthought that hasn't been thought of yet. Maybe a cliche can be skewed for effect or perhaps there's a place for wordplay so subtle it's barely noticeable but those that do will applaud the effort. Find the jokes. Your audience will love you for it. Finally, there's the humour is subjective excuse. So many clients and even a worrying number of creative directors are scared to make overtly funny work. Their excuse being humour is subjective and frankly, they're cowards. This is why. Firstly, it doesn't have to be funny to everyone. When we talk about universal truths in comedy, we mean it's universally true more or less to your audience. So your ad only has to be funny to your target audience. And if you think you know who that is well enough to apply some of the baseless made up marketing stuff that we use, like delivering the right message to the right person at the right time, you can sure as hell have a stab at making something that they might find funny. Secondly, emotions by their very nature are subjective, all of them. I read a comment from a creative director on LinkedIn recently that read something along the lines of, um, humour isn't as powerful as emotion. And I was a little bit sick in my mouth. Um, humour isn't universal, but the laughter reflex is. But then again, pathos isn't universal, but the crying reflex is. And if you think for a second that you have more power over somebody's tear ducts than you do their diaphragm, then you are severely underpaid and should immediately start writing a book outlining how you've cracked the code to emotional coercion. Finally, unless your campaign is predicated on the idea of loss aversion, surely you're better off trying to provoke a positive em emotional reaction in someone than a negative one? People pay good money to sit in crowded, sweaty rooms under pubs just for the pleasure of having some equally sweaty egomaniac attempt to make them laugh. That shit feels good. Endorphins and that. People want to feel good, it's programmed into us. So why wouldn't we as advertisers want to take advantage of that? It doesn't cost more to make a funny ad, but it does take bravery. So there you go. Life is really hard. It's serious and it's sad and it's stressful and it's disappointing. There's enough negative emotion to go around. And I'm not saying for a second that brands don't have a responsibility to behave in a socially conscious and purposeful way. But when it comes to their messaging and the creative work we put out into the world, a little bit of joy, levity and lightness can go a long, long way.